Hey there, just Chris here. For this episode, I want to tell you the story of one of my favorite video games of all time. I'd like to show you why this game not only tells an amazing story, but also why it's such a great game that anyone may enjoy. Before we begin, I want to thank everyone for the support of my channel as it's growing each day. I'm currently at 443 subscribers. I honestly feel glad that you enjoy my videos. Not only do I play games and stream, but I also love to not only explain the endings to movies and video games, but also go in depth of what the movie or game is about. This is my dream job, so if you'd like to support me, make sure to leave a comment and share with your friends. If you have a request for me to do a video on a certain video game or movie, make sure to just leave a comment. I'll take it into consideration. Also, I want to point out that I won't be talking about the character's backstory as much. But if you'd like me to in a future video, just ask in the comments. Make sure to stick around to the end where I share my thoughts on this game and what I expect in the future. Without further ado, let's dive into the wonderful tale of Resident Evil 3. The story begins by showing us the top story reports in the news of a new outbreak that's currently happening in Raccoon City. Our main protagonist, Jill Valentine, gets up from bed in the middle of a weather storm. As she makes her way into the restroom, she sees that the sink is left on. She walks towards it to shut it off but starts to bleed into the sink. As she looks at her reflection in the mirror, she sees that she's turning into a zombie. She quickly sees a gun and uses it to put an end into her nightmare. After awakening from the nightmare, we see that Jill has three more days until she can finally leave the city. The phone starts to ring in her apartment. Upon answering the phone, her fellow team member Brad warns her to get out of the apartment. As she tries to grab her stuff, a monster breaks through her wall into her apartment to try to kill Jill. Her only option is to run away and get outside as she tries to evade that thing. After successfully evacuating from the apartment, Jill sees her friend Brad. Brad informs her that the monster is haunting down the remaining STARS members, which are Brad Vickers and Jill Valentine. As they go through the city, they see the entire city has been infected. They rush into a bar to hold fort and escape. Unfortunately, Brad is bitten by one of the zombies while holding the doors. Brad tells Jill that there's no hope for him so she should go and try to escape the city. After leaving the bar back door, she comes across a dead police officer who has left a Glock 19. She grabs it and runs to a better place. While running through the city, a nearby civilian is holding fort in a building. Jill tries to convince him to go with her but decides to stay instead. Jill then comes across a parking garage where a police helicopter tells Jill to reach the roof to pick her up. As the helicopter tries to land, Jill is once again disrupted by the monster which shoots down the helicopter. Jill, in fear, gets inside the nearest car and runs the monster over from the roof to the ground. As she desperately leaves the car as it flames, the monster faces a man with a rocket launcher before it's defeated. The unknown man takes Jill to an underground subway where he and his team has escorted civilians into the trains. The man introduces himself as Carlos. He states that he is part of the Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service, UBCS for short. Jill responds as being pissed off with the Umbrella Corporation because they are responsible for the city's outbreak. Upon arriving at the subway, she then introduced to the team's captain, Mikael Victor. He recognizes Jill for who she is. Mikael asks Jill if she can help them evacuate the civilians and turn the power back on to make the train move. Jill goes back up towards the city and see how messed up the city has turned into. As she makes her way to restore the power, she comes across a man who has been deeply injured by zombies. Another man comes in and shoots the poor guy in the head before he turns into a zombie. Jill questions the man because he simply killed off one of his team members with no regret. After successfully turning the power back on, Jill makes her way back towards the underground subway, but is of course being chased by the monster once more. Jill safely gets to the subway where the man from earlier is reunited with his squad. We learn his name is Nikolai. 
he isn't happy that Carlos brought Jill to the subway. As they make their way to the train, the monster makes his way towards it as well. Jill makes it follow her to keep everyone safe. After escaping it once more, she finds herself in an underground sewer where lots of more creatures are. Once she makes her way outside upon a ladder, the monster intercepts Jill again. Jill is forced to make her way to the rooftop to face it once more. After defeating it again, she makes her way to a local gun store to find a fellow friend of Jill's named Robert Kendo, which is the man who is brothers with Joseph Kendo, who made the Resident Evil all-time favorite gun, the Samurai Edge. I personally love the backstory of the two brothers who have a great set of skills in making firearms. Robert decides to stay put but gives Jill the key to the back so she can move forward. Jill is reunited with Carlos as she runs away from the monster but makes it out safely. Carlos and Jill arrive at the subway where she rides off with the civilians. The train then finally moves away from the city, but is unfortunately stopped by the monster who wants to kill everyone, including Jill. Mikael gets grabbed by the monster and uses his C4 and detonates it to stop the monster from going further. The explosion, however, does derail the train and crashes in the tunnel. Carlos and former partner Tyrell Patrick make their way towards the Raccoon City Police Department where they hope to find a person. As they make their way inside, they see a police officer Martin is being chased by Brad who is now a zombie. Martin raises his gun to shoot Brad, but Brad says, I am sorry. Martin stops for a second as he couldn't believe his eyes and ears, but unfortunately Brad still bites Martin. At this point, the player has the option to either leave Brad alone till Tyrell opens the door, or defeat Brad and pick up his ID that the player may use for ammo and weapon upgrades. Once inside the police department, Tyrell informs Carlos that he has located the STARS office to find more information for their search and rescue mission. As Carlos makes his way towards the STARS office, he fights several zombies and liquors. Carlos then arrives at the office where he finds a computer where he can call Dr. Bard. Dr. Bard informs Carlos that he's been trying to reach someone for a long time and that he is trapped in a hospital surrounded by all kinds of monsters and zombies. He also informs Carlos that Umbrella has been killing all the researchers and that he's the only one who knows how to make a vaccine to stop the outbreak. After ending the call, Carlos receives a call from Jill, letting him know that the train has derailed and unfortunately everyone has died in the crash. We then return as Jill, where we see the train as she makes her way outside of she sees the monsters return. But this time it has evolved to a bigger and more powerful being. Jill is forced to fight it. Once she defeats it, she makes her way out of the area, but the creature wakes up and strikes Jill with one final shot before it goes down. Jill being hit with it, she starts to be in pain and falls unconscious. Six hours has passed since Jill striked, was striked down. Carlos finds her on the ground and carries her to the hospital where he tends to find a cure to save Jill's life. Carlos then makes his way towards Dr. Bard's office where he finds the doc has been killed by Umbrella. At the office, Carlos finds an email where the doctor has stored a vaccine in his locked room with a video of his last words. This is VRC Chief Nathaniel Bard, September 29, 11 p.m. I am acutely aware that my time's running out. And I hope and pray, by making this recording and bringing the truth to light, that I can restore some small shred of honor to my name. All of Raccoon City's suffering began with the release of a biological weapon known as the T-Virus. My employer, the Umbrella Corporation, engineered this virus. And they ordered my team to develop a vaccine, which we did. Now, I keep samples of this vaccine here in my office. The rest of it is stored underground. 
But those sons of bitches at the board, they want to destroy it. They don't want the world to know what they've done. So they're trying to erase all evidence that the virus ever existed. No, I'm not a fool. I know they don't want me to... Carlos is pissed about everything going on, so he strikes the monitor, but the monitor is able to open the door where he finds the vaccine. He then makes his way back to Jill and uses the vaccine to cure her. Carlos waits peacefully to see Jill's recovery. Tyrell then makes haste towards Carlos to warn him that they decided to send a nuke to destroy the city with all the zombies and monsters with it. They also warn the civilians to make their way out of the city before they send a nuke. Carlos then tell Tyrell to take care of Jill as he defends them by a horde of zombies. When he survives the horde of zombies, he checks on Jill where he sees she's okay and will be able to wake up soon. Carlos asks Tyrell to try to stall so they don't send a nuke and to buy time. Jill then wakes up after a nightmare. She is informed by Tyrell that Carlos saved her life and that they are trying to buy time so they can escape. Jill then makes her way to an underground facility where she finds Nikolai. Tyrell catches up with her as they continue their path towards the facility. They, however, are stopped by the monster once again, but this time kills Tyrell. Jill escapes and finds herself in a laboratory where she can make the cure to save the city. Once she makes the vaccine, she's once again stopped by the monster. As she's trying to survive, Nikolai steals the vaccine from Jill and forces her to fight the monster named Nemesis. So he can record all the data and sell the results to the highest bidder. Jill defeats Nemesis with the help of Carlos. Jill then catches up to Nikolai, but it turns out that the nemesis is still indeed alive, and it has evolved again. Jill then defeats Nemesis for the last time with a huge weapon. The nemesis is now finally defeated, and she makes her way towards the roof, where she finds Nikolai has knocked down Carlos, and tends to escape the city, leaving them behind. But Carlos rises and fights him, so Jill can shoot Nikolai. Nikolai, however, shoots the cure of the only vaccine that they can grab. Jill then tells him that she doesn't mind doing some work to find proof to put a stop on Umbrella. As Jill and Carlos take the chopper, they see the nuke strike the city and destroy the very city. Jill vows to end the Umbrella Corporation and stop them from destroying more lives. I believe that Resident Evil 3 not only tells an amazing story, but also shows that the remakes are the way to go. I want to thank Capcom for their hard work. I am very sad that it is a very short game, but I understand. I love the return of Jill Valentine. She is definitely one of my favorite characters in Resident Evil Universe, as to Chris Redfield. He is my number one. When I first heard about this game, I was so excited to see it come to life. Not only do I love the gameplay and story, but also the firearms. I may not know much about guns, but I love this that they brought back some of the old ones that fans can appreciate. For example, the Samurai Edge is one of the best firearms in the universe made by Joseph Kendo, a brilliant gunsmith. The only way to obtain it is to complete the first run to unlock the shop where you can unlock other outfits like Jill Star's outfit, which I love to use for every gameplay. Unfortunately, there isn't much content to do. I will say it's still nice to play the game and to try to get the platinum trophy. I just need to complete the game in the hardest difficulty to get the platinum trophy. It's pretty hard. That's all for today's video, I hope you all enjoyed today's episode, and like I said, if there's a game or movie you'd like for me to make a video on, just leave a comment. I decided to now take my videos to the next level by actually writing scripts instead of talking on the top of my head. It's definitely hard work, but it's totally worth it.
make sure you like this video and stay tuned for the next video which be about